Hi everyone! Welcome and thank you for turning into our very first episode of Power Word Crit. Uh, my oh. name is Corin and I am your dungeon master. Thank you, Ashlyn. Uh, my name mm -hmm. is Corin and I am your dungeon master. And with me, I have some very lovely players. They are. I'm Kayla. I'll be playing Celestine Peacechild, a human cleric. I'm David. I will be playing Lord Usarker von Pride, a human fighter. I am Ashlyn. I am playing an Air Genasi fighter named Isidore Welkenmov, uh, but please call her Izzy. Uh, and I'm Ander, and I'm going to be playing Kurt Bernhelt, um, and he is a human barbarian. Welcome everyone to the table. I'm, uh, I hope we're going to have a great time, which I know we will, so let's get to it! <laughs> The town of Green Nest is, a bus, is bustling. Well, it's bustling for a town its size. The market is in full swing, children are laughing and playing, and stray cats and dogs can be seen sneakily trying to beg for leftovers, to which a few group of children happily oblige. A woman, covered head to toe in religious garb, sighs in relief, seeing the sign hanging above the building with an image of, the, of a bed and the words, The Green Rest Inn, etched into the wood underneath. After a few wrong turns, and getting turned around at the keep in the middle of town, Celestine Peacechild, you found the inn. So, uh, Kayla, please describe your character for us. Okay. Uh, Celestine, you can't see too much of her, honestly. She's wearing a black habit with some red trim on it. Uh, everyone... You can see everyone walks specifically around her as she walks through town because everyone knows that this is a cleric or a uh, a cleric of the god Tempest. So she is walking through town. She made it to the inn and she is so, so relieved. She's been walking for a while now and she's just ready to get rid of the armor to get rid to have a nice bath and wash off the gore from her last battle and so she walks in and she talks to the innkeeper she is about 5'5 five five and when you look at her, her face you can see it's battle worn she is 45 years old blonde hair or blonde eyes Blue eyes and blonde, blonde eyes. hair. Yeah, that's cool. That's, awesome. that, that's know, a cool it's, it's variation very cool. there. Yeah, it's D&D. &D, you have all sorts of interesting and strange can... things. Blonde eyes and, and blue blonde hair. Eyes. <laughs> there you go. That's all <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Should I describe her without the garb, or should I just describe her as you can see her now? However you want to. Okay, I'm going to... I gonna... would just go for with the garb. Okay, so we're just going to describe her as the innkeeper can see her. He sees a large large woman. She's only 5'5", five five, but man, she takes up a lot of space. And so she <laughs> walks up to the uh, to the desk, small, shorter than him at 5'5", five five, but otherwise you really can't see much. Um, large and her older battle-worn face is about all you can really see. So she asks for a room and asks if they have any baths available. So the, uh, the innkeeper uh, he's a male. He's actually a male half-elf. He he kind of gives you a once-over because of the state of your garb. And, uh... You're bloody, right? <laughs> I mean, you can't tell. It's black. She's wearing a black habit with red trimming, so... It's the Wait, intestines yes. it hanging out yes. beneath it. <laughs> Theoretically, it should blend in somewhat. Is it like that song, Black Socks? They never get dirty. The exactly. Longer you wear them, the blacker they get. Exactly. <laughs> you Gross. Can't tell. So, I agree. Uh, the, but it's the, probably you could tell. Like it, it hasn't been bathed yet. It hasn't okay. been washed. Drip, you, you can tell. Drip, drip, there's probably oh. a a little bit of an aroma around her. You kind of get that after covered in blood and gore and walking for a day. It just kind of, yeah, mm. yeah, mm -hmm. yep, perfect perfume. Oh, for yeah. Bath. <laughs> she can't even smell it anymore. It's been all day. Well, unfortunately, the innkeeper can smell <laughs> still, <laughs> and he wrinkles his nose and he he says, "Ah, 
Well, uh, it's, it's eight silver per night. And we do have hot water available and a small room for guests to potentially do their laundry for a very extra fee of two <laughs> copper. Would you be interested, madame? Um, is that price reasonable for the size of an inn or this inn? Go ahead and... Go ahead and make a history check, because you've stated a lot of stuff before, or a mm -hmm. lot of inns before. That's a 13. Yeah, it's fairly, uh, especially for hot water. Okay, it's, yeah, it's a no. Good, it's a good Hot deal. water, she is not questioning. That's what she's getting, and the fact that she can also wash her clothes is she, yes, she'll take it. All right, so it's eight silver. Go ahead and mark that off your list, and two copper. Okay. He does give you change if you need change. <laughs> okay. Eight silver and two copper? Eight silver, two copper. Uh, as you as you go into your room, your room is surprisingly comfortable. Uh, you can move around easily. There's a small table there, and as even a set of drawers to put your items in. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, and a nice bed right in the middle. Ooh, that's nice. It's been a little while since she slept in an actual bed Very and not much. a bed roll. Don't lay in the bed yet. You're still dirty. Oh yeah, no. She's <laughs> priority. Priority is the bath. She gets that going immediately. <laughs> All right. So uh, you draw draw a bath. I assume that you're gonna do your laundry, hang out a little bit. Yeah. Just to let yeah. you know, you got here about one to two p.m. Okay. You managed to find it. So it's fairly early in the day. You have plenty of time if you want to go out and do stuff you can, or if you want to just bed up for the night, you're more than welcome to as well. Okay. Um, she's probably not gonna do too much. It's a smaller town, but she will go down and find some food. Uh, she is pretty pretty tired. So she'll go find some food and then she'll probably have an early night. Okay. All right. So that being the case, we are going to shift our camera, I should say, over to someone else. The sun beats heavily down upon a large brawny man. The road is rough. Loose gravel from the horse's hooves kick up into the cart every once in a while. You hear a voice. Hey, son, you awake? Yep, yep, yep. What's going on? Uh, Ander, go ahead and introduce your character. Yeah, um, so Kurt is, as you said, he's, he's a big brawny guy. Um, think of the archetypical lumberjack. Uh, that's the high concept I'm going for. Um, and he he's dressed in, you know, uh, red and black checkered shirt that's rolled up to his cuffs and he's got these huge forearms they're like big as you know most men's thighs um, and he's got this big bushy beard um, most people think that like he's kind of like this bear who walks into town except um, bears don't usually wear plaid shirts and carry axes because uh, he's got this big old great axe um, so he grabs all that stuff um, and looks over at, at the old man. What's going on? Well, Greenness is just a few miles beyond this point. We'll be getting there well before sundown. Uh, the old man lazily chews on some mastic gum. Do you know what mastic gum is? Um, do like you gum. masticate it? You yes, it. you masticate it. <laughs> uh, it's actually like, it's considered poor man's gum. Where they would, uh, people would take like tree resin and just chew on it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Something to keep busy. Yeah, something to keep busy. Um, Your poor teeth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so he he's chewing on some mastic gum. He's kind of kind of looking out to the the surrounding farmland, and there's there's some trees here, but it's it's fairly flat to what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, "By the way, what brings you all the way down here, anyways?" Didn't you say you were part of one of those logging groups up north? Yeah, I was up in the uh, Sunset Mountains, um, but I'm I'm here looking for my brother. Oh, would I know your brother? Um, he's not from around here. Uh, he he's from Elturel. He's um, part of a um, jewelry uh, a jeweler's business there. Uh. Um. But, um, he kind of pauses a moment and looks at the, the farmer, kind of sizing him up a little bit. Um, 
Have you ever heard of the dragon cultists? Hmm. And he kind of, he's got a scraggly beard and he kind of rubs it. One hand is on the horse and th this horse, by the way, has seen some days. Hmm. It's, it's purely just for, you know, traveling to and from places. It's a very slow horse. This, this journey should have taken, I don't know, a couple hours and you're going on like three or four at this point. So <laughs> this poor horse is, he's, he's dragging along. It's better than walking. So. Yeah. So the old man holding on to his horse with the reins with one hand, and he kind of he rubs his beard a little bit, and he says, "Ah, dragon cultists. Uh, I mean, I heard rumors about them. Are they are they real? Is are, is this like a real thing?" Yeah, real enough. They took my brother. Oh. Um. His uh, his name is Jaden. Um. And they left a ransom note with his family. Um, fortunately, uh, uh, they were able to get a messenger out to me, um, up the logging camp. Um, so I'm coming here looking for him. Oh, he, uh, he kind of looks at you and then looks at the horse and he, you know, says <laughs> giddy up. He's like, well, then we better go get your brother then. Uh, ransom notes ain't, ain't nothing to, uh, laugh about. And right. so the horse moves probably... <laughs> Just marginally. Just marginally faster, but you, you can now feel the wind in your hair. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want to do before you get to town? Um, no, just going over my meager possessions as such as they are. I, don't, I, I travel pretty light. Um, check over my axes and, and uh, the few you know, things in my, in my pack. Um, just make sure I've got everything handy. In fact, I'm, I'm actually going to hop out just for a little bit and walk out next to the cart. Okay. Um, just to limber up. The so. old man kind of raises his eyebrow and he's like, eh, I, I thought you were paying me to to get you there, but I mean, you can walk if you want. Just for a minute. Been oh. sitting for a bit. Got to stretch these legs. All right. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Um, nothing really happens on the journey. The old man uh, drops you off. I guess, unless mm -hmm. you're still walking. No, I got back on. Okay. That was, that was the thing. <laughs> Just hop right back in. Yeah. Um, he drops you off and he says, well, I, I hope you find a brother and uh, y'all come back now. Yep. You, you definitely have a place with uh, Betsy and me back back on the home front. I appreciate that. You've been very kind. Um, and I'm in your debt. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And he slowly has his horse, horse trot away. You're not entirely sure if the horse is going to make it. <laughs> it might, uh, it might need a rest. <laughs> so as you're walking through town, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and just do a general perception check. Um, that is going to be a 15. Oh, 15. All right. Mm -hmm. So you don't see any, uh, you don't see any dark and scary people hiding in shadows or in corners or anything. I don't see anybody holding up, hey, I'm a dragon cultist sign. You don't. It's like those airport signs, you know, like dragon cult is here. Please, yeah. you know, please for limo ransom. service. Yeah, please, please drop ransom off here. Uh, no, you don't really see any of that. Uh, but you do know, just based on what you have learned on your journey about the dragon cultists, that they kind of hide in plain sight. They're they're very they could be anybody they could they could be the baker down the way they could be a or as high as a, a politician mm -hmm. they could be anybody um, so you don't really see anybody shifty but uh, as the day has worn on uh, it's about 4 p.m. when you arrived so these and sundown I think is uh, sundown will be in a few hours and uh, the ransom was not for today it was for the next day okay cool. so it's not like again there's no airport sign <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so what would you like to do uh i'm gonna find lodging for the night all right uh you wander around a little bit and you find an inn called the green rest inn looks comfortable mm -hmm. gonna go in um i don't have a lot of cash um um so i think that his general approach is trading services. He's got a strong back and he's willing to put it to use. Mm -hmm. um, so um, when it, when I go when I go in and approach the innkeeper, that that's kind of my approach is to, okay, do you, do you have any you know work that I can do to um, pay for a night's rest? Okay, 
So as you're as you're walking in, there a carriage kind of passes in front of you and you kind of go around it and you see somebody kind of you see someone uh, step out of the carriage but you don't really pay him any mind. Um, you walk in and the innkeeper says, "Actually, you know what? We are kind of low on firewood. You look like a uh, young strapping young man. Uh, do you chop wood?" Do I chop wood? Yes, sir. Um, I just came down from the uh, Sunset Mountains logging camp. Um, you can say I know my way around an axe. Oh yeah, we we get we get a few of you every summer vacation or so. Yeah, the good good strong people, good strong people. So, yeah, we've got we've got some wood back there if you want to chop it, and I will yeah. cut your cut your pay by half, so it'd be four silver Perfect. instead of eight, as long as you can do a certain amount. Oh. Yeah. You, you point, I cut. <laughs> so he tells you he needs... Uh, yeah. Let's, let's roll. I'll do my first roll, everybody. So exciting. <laughs> How Ooh. much... Go, Corin. How much wood does he need? Oh, jeez. How much uh, wood could a wood, woodman chuck? He needs 29 logs. Okay. So now now I, I pull Precise. out my... Precisely 29 logs. <laughs> no more, no less. <laughs> no more, no less. <laughs> Feel like more, I'm in an MMO. And you're an overachiever. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> go go, go collect firewood. Chuck chuck <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and make go ahead and make a strength check with advantage to see how quickly you can chop this wood. Okay. Just because why not? Could character- I do this with athletics? Does his character you know what? have you can. A skill lumberjack or something? <laughs> Um, Do you? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that I have Logger. indicated okay. so, anything. So, so, so logging isn't a cool. skill. All right. Uh, we we Probably. made you a custom background or something. It, like it that. is now. <laughs> <laughs> and you have. If it. he does, and then you have it. Yeah, yeah. strength based. Yeah, go ahead and do an athletics with uh, advantage. Cool. Because this is your this is your thing. I get to roll two dice. Hooray! So exciting. Oh, one of those was a one. Good thing I've got advantage. Okay. Um, that is a 19. We, okay. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. Game. You manage to Long day. call upon <laughs> your years of training and years of... This is, this is just muscle memory. Yeah. It's just yeah. like thump, thump, mm-hmm. thump. And you managed to do this in an hour. 29 logs in an hour. Impressive. And that's ah, like chopping that's... a tree down and making a log. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. All in a day's work. I gather up the stuff and you know, bring it up, bring it up, and come to the innkeeper. And he's like, "Hey, I've got your wood." The innkeeper's jaw drops. He goes, "One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> twenty-nine exactly." And I, I plant my axe down. And his his jaw kind of drops a little. He goes, oh, "You know what? Hey, maybe I, I've two still got silver. some energy. We'll, we'll you make, want we'll some make, more? I'll give you a room for two silver." And for use of the laundry room if you need it. Uh, throw in a meal and it's a deal. Done. Yeah. And you two shake on it. And yeah. So changing the camera angle to just outside of the inn. A dark carriage slowly comes to a halt in front of a building. A very burly uh, man who looks kind of like a bear in a plaid shirt, steps out of the way and doesn't seem to mind it. A few others do it, do that as well. A few moments later, a tall, thin, pale man steps down onto the pavement, brushing off his coat. A few people do look questioningly at this man because he's kind of pale for this area, but Maybe he's maybe he's just moving on. They they kind of wander off. Uh, the driver pulls down some luggage from the back and sets it on the ground near the man's feet. He wipes his hands on his pants before extending his hand out, smiling. Thank you for your patronage, sir. I hope your ride was comfortable. Yes, the ride was quite comfortable. I take his hand and firmly grip it and shake it. Thank you so much for delivering me here. I am very pleased at the time we made. I count out whatever coins I still needed to pay him and give them to him. He, he graciously accepts it and says, Thank you. Thank you for using our service, sir. Now, if you could point me to... Um, what is the name of that inn that was discussed, discussed Green Rest? Yes, the Green Rest Inn. He, he kind of chuckles and points his thumb behind him. And you see 
behind him is the big sign that says green breast <laughs> in. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. You're I so welcome, I will handle my sir. own luggage if you don't mind. Of course, of course. Thank you so much. And if you could recommend us to any of your friends, we would we would greatly appreciate it. The next time one of my friends makes it out here, I will absolutely suggest that they look you up. Thank you. Thank you. Reviews help a lot. Fishing for those Uber reviews, I see. Yeah, fishing for those <laughs> D&D Uber reviews. <laughs> uh, all right. So you the carriage trots off. The horses trot off with the carriage. Uh, what do you do? You're standing in front of the inn. People are kind of giving you a curious look because you don't really look like you're from around here, but beyond that... Would you like a character description? You know what? Let's do that. Awesome. Usarker. All right. What does Usarker look like? In any common scene, Lord Usarker von Pride is like a shadow, an eerily, eerily detached from the wall, and now standing in the middle of the room. He is tall, thin, and gaunt, with sable hair beginning to hint at gray, a face caught between the strength of a man in his prime and the looming curtain of age. He is currently wearing an overcoat, which not really designed to conceal his features or, or anything like that, just for the hard travel that he's had. And he has his luggage, which you know he is getting ready to pick up, his attire is nice. Nice, but perhaps very rugged. The st type of attire of somebody who is used to more fine things, but knows that they have a hard trip ahead of them. So at this point, I reach down and I pick up my luggage. So it should be noted that Usarker is very tall, well over six feet high. He tends to tower over most people in any room that he's in. And he is also very, very thin. And that can be deceptive. He's so tall and so thin that you don't think, oh, this man must be quite strong. But the ease with which he lifts up his luggage and carries it towards the Green Rest Inn suggests a terrifying strength inside of his frame. So as you go to reach your luggage, uh, you hear the sound of a ball kind uh, rolling right in front of your luggage and this, this bright red ball stops and you hear a kid go i got it i got it and you hear running and around the corner uh this this little kid uh maybe six maybe seven he he goes to reach for the ball and then he sees you and his his eyes kind of slowly rise uh, and no. he's his his jaw drops a little bit and he goes are you a vampire <laughs> <laughs> i look at him how do you know if something is a vampire or not? I ask them, are you a vampire? And must That's they say funny. yes if they are? Cool. <laughs> that was a question. Must they say yes if they are? Oh, yes. uh, I, I guess not. They could lie. Are you lying to me? No, I am not lying to you, and nor am I a vampire, small child. Okay, can I have my ball back, sir? You are free to take it. Thanks! And he grabs it and just immediately runs off. He's going to start telling his friends about the vampire and, he met. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> often the vampire there's, oh, that's not a vampire. Totally. Yeah, and often the distance here, I think I met a vampire, but he was lying that he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All those gosh darn kids. <laughs> so, what do you do? luggage in hand, and the luggage is quite heavy. I am going to walk towards the Green Rest Inn. All right, so you walk through the door. A uh, half-elf innkeeper greets you. He says, hello, hello, sir. Welcome to, welcome to the Green Rest Inn. How may I help you? Yes, I've heard that you have reasonable rates. The, ne the town near over said about eight silver an evening. Is that correct? That is correct. We also have hot water and a laundry facility. And if you wish to use a laundry facility, it would cost two copper more. Is food included in this meal? Breakfast is. Breakfast is. <laughs> that will do for now then. I think I think uh, the northerners call it a continental breakfast. <laughs> ah. Well, I've never been as far as wherever they say that. 
but I know <laughs> what you mean. Uh, so you purchase the room. I count out the coins precisely and hand them to the innkeeper. All right. Just curious, do you have any like weapons visible? In terms of weaponry, he has, has attached to his luggage a long, slender polearm. If you know what a war scythe is, it is a modified scythe, not like those that you see used in Grim Reapers. Um, yeah, Grim Reapers, but rather the blade has been reaffixed and the directional on it is changed in order to make it a dangerous chopping and slashing weapon. Essentially like 5th edition's glaive. Uh, he, he sees the uh, ginormous thing and says, uh -huh. ah. Oh, that's true. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't that? think we uh, have any room to store that. You're gonna have to store that in your room. I'm so sorry, sir. I was not expecting to do anything else. This is a weapon. A weapon is useless if it is stored somewhere inaccessible. The innkeeper kind of nods and looks a little uncomfortable at the moment. <laughs> He's like, uh, "Right, right. So uh, uh, breakfast starts it." Seven, and it ends at nine. So, if there is anything else I can do for you, uh, I I can give you your key to your room. I would appreciate it, and don't worry, I will not hesitate to call on you if I need anything. Great, great. <laughs> he sounds so comforted by this. Great. great. So he hands you your key and uh, like quickly retracts his hand. He goes, oh, no. uh, uh, pardon me. And he, he goes to help another customer oh, who <laughs> seems to... Uh, his hand, by the way, is thin and pale like a dead fish. Like a vampire's? Go ahead and, go ahead and do an insight check on this guy. Poor guy, you're making him nervous. So my first roll of the evening, I rolled a 14 and my insight has a... Plus four modifier for Ooh. a grand total of 18. Nice. You think that maybe the kid asking you if, it, if you were a vampire? This guy also wants to ask you if you're a vampire. <laughs> it's a common question. Apparently. It's, it, apparently it's a common question down here. And maybe they just like their vampire lore. You're not entirely sure. But uh, it seems to be a, a theme going on here. Lord Von Pride is not surprised by this. The farther he's gotten away from the vaults of knowledge and understanding, <laughs> the more he's had weird questions like this and misappropriations of old tales and lore and knowledge. Right. So the time right now is about 4.30, and sundown again is in a few hours. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to do before the evening? <sighs> I am going to see to it that a warm bath is drawn. I am going to soak and relax in it until all the weariness of travel has left me. Then I will head downstairs with my book in hand and I will get a meal and a lovely warming beverage and I will recount and record the things that I have seen and thought of today. Okay. So you, you knock on one of the, the doors of the bath. The, there's different rooms. There's about three different baths. Uh, three different bathrooms. Ah, bathrooms. <laughs> That's what they're called. They're actually bathrooms. Literally yeah. so. That's what they're That's called, Goran. Come on, man. So you knock on one and you hear... Yes, one moment. So, ah, I believe that... You this one is occupied. Fear not, I will take a different place. I'm like, oh, no, no. And I open the door. And I say, I'm, I'm done using it. And I walk out. And you just see... So, large woman. But this time, she's not wearing all, her hood for the habit. And so you can see that in addition to having just a worn face, she also has very, very long blonde hair that goes all the way down to her rear. And it's in a braid right now. Um... It must have taken her a while to braid her hair because it's long. Um, so she waves and scoots around you, and you don't see, I mean, you see that she's wearing a black robe at this point. She's not wearing the full habit, but you see that there's the red trimming, and you also see the symbols of Tempest on her sleeves, which is a silver sword on a red flaming shield. 
So I part to give her a wide berth. Best not to deal with the bloody clerics of Tempus if you have to, uh, unless you have mm-hmm. to. Interestingly enough, you don't see, like, maybe not interesting, you don't see any weapons on her. You just came so, out of a bath, right? Yeah, it I is true. <laughs> it is true, but we just might saying. We question if you came out of a bathroom with your weapon. It comes Wait, out of the bath fully you armed. Don't, <laughs> you don't take your Play daggers armoring. to the bathroom? <laughs> Wait, you don't, like, clean them in the same water? What are you talking about? What would the humidity do to the metal? (laughs) You're washing it anyways. Yeah. I mean... You don't really wash swords. Not that your character... Do you just hose them down? You're like, eh, it's good enough. You don't know what my character uses. Because she's obviously not carrying a weapon. I imagine wipe it down and then polish her oil or something Right. Mm -hmm. Much like gun care today is you clean it and then you would oil it to keep it from rusting. You never know when you're going to get jumped in the bathroom. That's true. That's true. It could happen. <laughs> are for. I mean, a vampire could show up randomly. I know, you never right? Know. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this so, woman... So I just... She's... Man, you were like over a foot taller than me. Uh, you're 5'5"? Five, five. Yeah. Yeah, over a foot taller than you. And a l- I'm a lot heavier than you are. Quite probably, yes. That's what it looks like anyway. You can't tell because the robe, very billowing robe. But I, I like to think still. that my feet are making hardly any sound and your feet are thump, thump, thump. <laughs> yep, <laughs> probably. So I excuse you to uh, enjoy your bath and I calmly walk down the hallway to my own room. Do you have any holy symbol or the like visible on your character? Um, I'm wearing a pendant, which is a sword. The flaming sword of Tempest? Yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. It matches the symbols on my uh, sleeves. So I give the holy symbol a long look as you pass, but aside from that. Are you saying you're reacting to a holy symbol? That is, in fact, correct. I am reacting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, oh Celestine boy. might take notice of this, especially given the rest of your attire, we'll say. And we'll go with that. And she's just going to go to her room. All right. So the restroom is yours. Excellent. Celestine might be blessing her room tonight. I, I, I am <laughs> seeing to it that the water is... Well, let's just say that after I see the water she used... I need a new bath drawn. Yeah, so... And I have some concerns about what she <laughs> has been up to or doing. Right. Uh, so- given, the, given the red stain, and I don't perhaps want to be associated with a bath full of gore. Yeah, the, the bath water's pink. I'm, yep, I'm like looking yep. at it and I'm like, are those entrails? <laughs> oh, wait, those are just about. copper pieces. Oh, she left some copper pieces. <laughs> so somebody does come in eventually, clean it up for you. They <laughs> they just didn't realize somebody would go in that quickly. Uh, so they clean it for you. They, they draw you uh, more hot water. They heat it up for you, put it in the bath. And as you're waiting for that, you're, you're waiting in the room. There's a, there's a window uh, about... Well, for you, it wouldn't be not. It would not be head height. You have to. You have to kind of like bend down to look at it. <laughs> Celestine, it's head height. <laughs> yeah, because you're you're at the top. You're at the second level, so people can't see in, but you can see out. And you just you kind of look out and you see this this that guy who originally walked around your carriage earlier, who who was wearing that plaid shirt, and the he plaid is, bear. Yes, the plaid bear. Yeah, and he is chopping wood at an exponentially <laughs> fast rate and you're what what are you thinking on this so my first th- thought is that you know he, he's obviously a busy man but is he a local or is he something else you're you're not sure i have a wonderful history not check could i attempt to find out you can certainly try I rolled, I rolled dead average with a 10, which means I'm going to have a 16 in total. Ooh. Okay. Do you have any markings on any of your clothes that would suggest where you come from, Kurt? Um, I think that um, what he's wearing is typical of the, the mountain men and loggers and such. So maybe his trousers and, and such is that style. 
Um, so not that it's like, ooh, fashion, but just, just very utilitarian and, and from those kind of um, fibers and what's traded up there. So that, that's what I would expect. Okay. Starker um, has an eye for details. Think of, you know, all your great detectives like um, Sherlock Holmes or um, the guy from Psych. You know, he, he looks at your clothing and your attire, and I think he would recognize that you, your clothes are not from around here, and your skin is not the same as the people around here. Right. And so I mark you as a foreigner, and I'm guessing that a foreigner working in the inn's lumberyard is probably paying his way. Is that a fair assumption? That would be a fair assumption for a 16. Yeah. Uh, the, the bath is drawn for you. And right. you soak. I soak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm imagining the water displacement is like... <laughs> Half an inch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah he, get, yeah, he gets in and the water level doesn't even rise at all. <laughs> Is there even a person in this water? No, just a vampire. Just a vampire. The water doesn't rise. The, 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 the bath maid is wondering if there was even a ripple. She checks the mirror cautiously. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I may see a reflection, but... Oh, she checks the mirror, but she can't see anything because it's fogged up because oh, of all, oh, all the heat and that's steam. That's true. Is this, is this vampire fog or is this just steam? You will never know. See, we won't actually know until like episode 30 if Usurker is actually a vampire. It's yep. true. Yeah. It's probably true. You know, because of course, by episode 30, we'll be high enough level to where I could be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so you're soaking, Celestine. You're resting, yep. Kurt. You um, have finished chopping your wood. Uh, I'm going into the, into the common room. Okay, and you're for hanging. my promised meal, and um, I'm going to buy some ale or whatever they've got on hand too. All right. Yeah. The the meat is pretty good. The brie is pretty good. It's uh, I'll say roast lamb. Oh, it's even identifiable. This is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it's identifiable meat. <laughs> yeah. Whenever they when start serving the dinner, for an identifiable meat. Uh, well, you take what you can get. <laughs> Whenever you, start usually, so it's because I, I, I did it. I was going to say, yeah, is it identifiable? Because you're like, squirrel, shot, <laughs> you know, shot today with an arrow. Uh, Pheasant, shot yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be impressive. Very, very well, impressive. If he's the one shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I don't actually have a bow on me or anything like that. So. Mm, Just kill with your bare hands. Yeah. You, you, yep. should, you should go talk My to... My bare hands. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, one of us is a vampire. The other one is a werebear. Mm -hmm. He kills things with his bare hands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets oh, into gosh. fights, it gets downright grisly. That's uh -huh. almost... That's almost... Ah. Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's almost like a beginning of a joke. A vampire, a werebear, and a, a cleric walk a into a <laughs> walk into <laughs> an inn. A, a priest, what? a vampire, and a and, and a lycanthrope walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys are fairly preoccupied. Yep. As soon as dinner starts coming up, Celestine will go down to eat some. But in the meantime, she's definitely resting her. Uh, she's feeling her uh, older. Old bones right now. It's We're not as easy as that it feather used to mattress, be. Assuming it's a feather bed mattress. <laughs> She'll take anything. It's better than the ground. <laughs> I mean, as long as springs aren't poking out, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, as you guys eat your dinners, probably in your respective corners or shadows, mm -hmm. depending on what you prefer. A shadow or, or a shadow with a corner, preferably. Uh, a shadow right corner. smack dab in the center. Okay, although, that makes sense. Although having said that, I do have, because it's coming on towards evening, right? And the sun is going down. I do have a place that has access to a light because I have a book that I am actively writing in and I am much more engaged in that than I am in whatever it is that they're feeding me here. <laughs> All right. You have no idea. They, someone asks you later, what did you have for dinner? And you're like, I don't know, but I was reading this interesting book. <laughs> well, I'm not reading it. I'm writing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, you're <laughs> writing. <laughs> so, um, outside of Greenest, there is a caravan coming with multiple carriages. Ooh. 
A blue-skinned woman looks out the window of the carriage, relief flooding her eyes. For the past several days, she has been traveling a road that winds lazily across the rolling grasslands of the greenfields. Sundown is soon approaching. You, Ashlyn, see atop of a hill as you guys are cresting it. You see the town of Greenness just a few short miles away. Ashlyn, please introduce your character. All right. Uh, so Izzy is an Air Genasi. She is in her mid-twenties, a little over five feet tall, pale blue skin and white hair that hangs just past her shoulders. She has several braids interspersed throughout her hair. She wears loose-fitting traveling clothes with a leather vest and arm bracers. Around her waist, she wears a wide belt where a lot of necklaces, bracelets, rings, and other fine jewelry hang, kind of similar to a belly dancer's hip skirt. It's what she uses to sell her wares since she is a jewelry artisan. On her back, she carries two scimitars and a longbow. She is very bubbly and optimistic and animated when she talks to people that uh, she's traveling with and she is always eager to show off her wares and make a sell whenever she's able to and yeah she is a walking genazi shop <laughs> well good thing because a child suddenly climbs into your lap and sticks her head out the window excitedly exclaiming mommy mommy look we're almost there daddy's gonna be so happy to see us uh this this child is just barely in the carriage they are, oh, no. they are grabbing they are grabbing tightly so you're not sure that like they're gonna fall but they are just they are so excited that potentially like a strong breeze might Pick them up and I am definitely grabbing onto this child before they fall out the window because that's going to be a tragedy waiting to happen. <laughs> she um, she <laughs> squirms and she goes, ah, "That tickles! That tickles, mommy! <laughs> I'm so excited! We're going to see daddy!" Uh, but uh, beside you, you hear Taryn, please. Uh, oh, the woman next to you begs, embarrassed and exhausted, as she tries to pull the child back towards her. <laughs> her other two children are asleep against her side, so this is kind of a difficult task for her. Oh. Yes, honey. Daddy will be so happy to see us. Just just please stay in your seat a little bit longer. <laughs> she trails off as the child scoots over to another passenger and starts talking their ear off. As children do. As they do. The mother looks to you and sighs. I, I am so sorry about that, miss. It's been nearly three months since she's seen her father. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Children are so boisterous at that age. I completely understand. And you definitely look like... You have your hands full. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, we were, we actually have, are traveling back from El Torel. Uh, we are visiting my my side of the family while their dad has been re renovating their house. Our house? Yeah. They've been renovating our house. And uh, we figured it would be easier to have the children away mm -hmm. for that so they wouldn't get do underfoot. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, definitely taking the kids to visit the grandparents. I'm assuming grandparents is always a good thing and definitely less stressful for those who are trying to get work done. Uh, the child runs up to you and she says, hi, my name is Taryn and I'm four. <laughs> and my grandma is super cool because she writes books. That is so amazing, Taryn. Did you know that I made this bracelet and I show her a bracelet that is on my wrist it is actually a, a flawed um, attempt at a bracelet that I cannot sell. Um, and so I will take off this bracelet and I will uh, bend it a little bit so that it will fit her better because it's one of those like open cuff bracelets. Mm -hmm. So I will bend it so that it fits her. I'm, Taryn is a girl, right? Taryn is a girl, yes. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Um, and I'll say, Taryn, do you, do you like this bracelet? I can give it to you. <gasps> Really? Yes. And her eyes go really wide. It, it would look beautiful on you. You would enhance the beauty of this bracelet. It only looks so, so on me, but on you, it will look stunning. Mommy, mommy, can I please, can I please? And she's jumping up and down and she accidentally uh, stumbles into her brother and he goes, oh, no, I'm home. <laughs> Poor kid. 
<laughs> and he turns over and tries to fall back asleep. And and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give a look to Taryn's mother, saying like, "It's totally fine. This is something I'm willing to give free of charge, no payment necessary, kind of thing. Just something she... to." please her kid and maybe placate her so that she's not as boisterous. <laughs> she she gratefully smiles at you. She says, thank, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. And I'll help put the bracelet on Taryn's uh, wrist. And... Taryn stays still just long enough for you to put this bracelet <laughs> on her. <laughs> And she then reminds she... me of me when I was that age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's hope. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't, don't worry. It, it will do her great justice when she's older. Promise. <laughs> and I give like a small little wink to Taryn. <laughs> Taryn winks back and immediately uh, shoves the, the second girl also sleeping on her mother. And goes, Willow! Willow, look what I got! Look what I got! Look what you didn't get! And... <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that, that goes on for quite a while. So, as the lights grow brighter... As the sun goes down, you notice fellow passengers are looking confused, then concerned, then horrified. I am looking to see what they're looking at. So you're about, I would say, 10 minutes away from arriving at the city, and you, you kind of peek out the window, and the the sky is lit. So you, at first you start thinking there might be like a festival or something. Oh, it's a party! Maybe not, though, looking at everyone else's faces. Hmm. <laughs> this so may not be one. The woman who introduced herself as Lenan Swift. Yeah, mm-hmm. Lenan Swift. Okay. She she looks puzzled and she goes, I, I don't I don't think there's supposed to be a festival tonight. Uh, and can I can I look more closely to discern what is the source of the light? Go ahead and... Yeah, this would be an investigation check. Alrighty. So as you're doing that... That's an 18. All right. So we'll get back to that one in a second. Remember okay. that number. So as you guys are finishing up dinner, the sun has started to set. And you, you notice the pleasant smell of, you know, like... Uh, wood fire burning Uh and I mean Kurt this is very common for you but Mm -hmm. go ahead and make go ahead and make a go ahead and make an inside check sure everyone or just Kurt just Kurt Uh, 16 so Kurt you've been in the woods a lot Mm -hmm. you know the different types of wood burning smells you know all this stuff uh, different woods have different smells, mm-hmm. as you well know. Very familiar with wood. This, uh, this is starting to become very strong, and Ooh. you. Is it more like building fire? Uh, it's. It doesn't smell like. It doesn't smell like fresh cut wood. It smells right. like very dry wood mm-hmm. burning. Mm. So. Uh, as you look around, uh, the the people sitting in the room seem to be okay, but you notice that the innkeeper is is looking outside, worried. Um, I'm gonna get up and go talk to him. Okay. Um, like what's what's going on? Uh, I don't. I I hear like shouting, and I hear it, it sounds kind of like f- fireworks. And then all of a sudden you hear a boom as the whole inn shakes like something heavy just just dropped on this thing. And as as you guys are you know reeling back from this this sight uh, the sound, Izzy, you're 18. Yes. So you are about five ten minutes away. Mm-hmm. You notice that. The town itself is a little too ablaze. This is not normal. Oh, and it looks good. like there might be fires coming from multiple parts of the city rather than one area where a festival might be. Oh dear. Um, I'm gonna turn to Lenon and I'm going to say, okay, um, and I'm, I'm trying to whisper so that her kids don't hear because I don't want them to panic. Uh, kids when they're panicking are a mess to handle. 
I know um, from all the years I spent growing up in the orphanage. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Linan and I'm going to uh, subtly tell her, I think there's trouble in Greenest and I don't think you want to bring the kids there right now. Um, can you pass this along to the passengers? And then I am going to, how fast is the carriage going? Like, could I outpace this carriage if I were to run? If you ran at top speed, you could. All right, I'm gonna do that because I am concerned and there are civilians here and they do not need to be going into whatever this mess is. All right. And so I am going to uh, tell the carriage driver to stop and I will book it out of the carriage and start telling all the other carriages in the caravan to stop and I'm going to start running to the town. All right, so this is a good point to bring up. They looked horrified and you didn't notice this at first, but as you're running, you see a giant shadow above the clouds. Um, All of a sudden, mm-hmm. this thing, bird. This thing swoops down and lands on a building. Oh my word. (laughs) Its talons are huge. It's scaly. The teeth on this thing, you can see the teeth from here. You're five minutes away and you can see them. Uh, the, The wingspan is the biggest wingspan you have ever seen on any flying creature in the world. It also has like a mane of scales going down its down the back of its neck. It's also blue. Mm. Oh. This is a dragon. Yeah. Oh boy. At that moment, the dragon roars. All of you feel your bones start rattling from the sound of this roar. And there goes that relaxation. So, you three in the tavern. Uh, something heavy has literally just stomped on this this building. Uh, the walls shake and the the building kind of groans in a way that you're like, wait, is this thing gonna come down? What do you guys do? And we do not know that it is a large scaly blue horror from above yet. You have heard a, a ginormous uh, roar, but I mean, you could try to look out the window. Are you brave enough to look out the window to see what landed on the building? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Celestine walks over to the window and looks out. All right. Do we hear Her, people screaming window, right? yet? Um, yeah, I was already at the window. So do, do I see anything um, come? Like, do I see any wings or tail or claws come down? You see huge claws gripping the, the corners. You as well, Celestine, oh, since gosh. you came by. Uh-huh. And you see... Oh, don't tell me it's a, looking in. A dragon head kind of lift or move its way forward like it's about ready to take off again. Oh, okay, that's fine. I thought I was looking. You, I, was, I, was, the I did not want to look in the window. Uh, I'm gonna turn back and say, "Everybody, get down," because um, I assume that it's gonna jump mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, hold on to something. Brace yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Zucker, okay. what are you doing? Hmm. I am taking in all the information here. I have stood up from where I am when he says this uh, large burly plaid fellow. You know that you know to brace ourselves. I am going to sh- you know press myself back into the corner so that any falling debris is less likely to land on me. Okay, so as you as you press back, you you said you fell to the ground. Um, I'm probably huddling next to the window, but not yeah. definitely not splayed out on the ground. Okay, That'd so be too vulnerable. I assume that um, so Celestine. Yes. Yeah, Celestine and I, um, like brace up against the the side of the wall. Okay. Um, right there, with, mm-hmm. with the the innkeeper who was there as well, I believe. The innkeeper is screaming, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Not very, being very subtle, he's screaming off in the background. He's like, "Oh my gosh, what is that?" And just as he says, "What is that?" It roars again and then takes off. And the you see chunks of the top uh, level start, you know, it grabs chunks in its claws and it just drops them as it flies off. Just out in the street? Just out in the street, yeah. Oh, like there goes There's the... thatching that's fallen, there's like chunks of the wall. Um, you'd have to go up there to see how much damage was done, but it, it looks like the building is still intact. Oh. Mostly. Small miracles. Yeah. At least we'll that take level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the by the way, there are 
Celestine, what floor was your room in? There are uh, 10 other the patrons. <laughs> <laughs> there are 10 other patrons in there with you, and they are terrified. They are starting to scream as well. Is there a basement in this place? Uh, you can ask the innkeeper. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the innkeeper on my way out the door and say, uh, tell them to hide the people in the basement. And Celestine, you're going to see that uh, she grasped her habit and all of a sudden she doesn't take it off. No, she's not, she's not that, uh, I don't know if the word civilized, but she rips it off and you see that even during dinner, she is still wearing her chain mail. She is still, and somehow you also realize why she's looked so large this whole time. She has a giant maul strapped to her back that has somehow been hiding under the habit this whole time. And so you see Did you she, have like a hunchback this whole time? Or? Um, the handle <laughs> was up at the top. So she may have had an odd butt. Okay. That didn't sway right. <laughs> her rear, every time she moved, just it didn't move right. <laughs> It's like there's a third cheek or something. (laughs) What's going on here? Have you seen that um, old Frankenstein skit where Igor's hump keeps changing sides? Oh, Oh, young Frankenstein, right? Frankenstein. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that's what I'm always imagining. Yeah, basically. What's your hump on the other side? (laughs) Except you mean lower. (laughs) So, but do not question the the clerics of Tempest. 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 Yeah. And so she's just enormously muscled as she takes the giant mole off her back and handles it with ease. Mm-hmm. Tells, I'll tell the innkeeper to take the people down to the basement. Mm-hmm. And then I am going to walk outside. All right. So brave. I would like to Poor calm stupid. and collectedly <laughs> walk up to where the innkeeper is screaming. And I am looking out the front door. I'm watching this creature. Do I have any idea what it is? Uh, you have heard tales. You've read books. This is clearly a blue dragon. It doesn't, uh, clear as day. You know exactly what this is. In that case, I'm going to put a hand on the innkeeper who's screaming and just say, it appears that the question, answer to your question, what is this? What is that? Is dr- Draconis Azur, possibly rather large, meaning it's quite old. In other words, it's a dragon. And probably more than anything in this town can handle. I pat him on the shoulder. Um, I would suggest not being seen. Yeah. I'm then going to, you know, just leave and walk back up, back to my room where I am going to mm-hmm. meticulously put on my own equipment, which has been, you know, I made this myself. This is a material that, you know, I made during my time, you know, studying metalwork and, you know, learning metallurgy. And so I'm going to put it on, you know, just precisely and cleanly, making sure that everything is where it needs to be. Okay. And you have heavy armor, right? Yes. Chainmail. So that will take 10 minutes? A while. A while, yeah. A while. Usually you're supposed to have help. Okay. You're so So, good at it, though. You don't need it, right? I think 5th edition just, you know, assumes Assumes you can do it. You're you're amazing. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So how long are the innkeeper? We are heroes. Yeah, so the innkeeper's like, (laughs) basement. I don't have a basement, but they have a basement. Everybody get to a basement. And he just starts shepherding people to the to another building. Oh, okay, I was afraid he was going like, to leave him. Yeah, you hear pounding on the back door and other people in the other building are screaming as well because this thing, uh, mind you, there was only one talent on this building. Mm-hmm. Oh, The other talent oh, was, so on was on the other buildings. buildings. Oh, that's okay. a little it, it, bigger. It, yeah, it had gotten like yeah. on both of them and then had leapt off. Okay. So, yeah. It was probably straddling like four buildings, one leg on each <laughs> building. It was... Eh, it's probably more like two. I looked up the the uh, size of this thing. Okay. It's like another two-story building. Okay. On top of a two-story building. So, yeah. Cool. Anyway, uh, Kurt, what are you doing? Um, not running into the street. Okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, probably trying to keep out of sight as well. H- has the dragon like? Is it doing anything actively like? Destroying the town, doing any crazy breath weapon stuff. So go ahead and do a. Has anything set, been set on fire or exploded? Is my question. So you you do smell fire, um, and but what you know, I assume 
I am assuming that you guys know the basics of dragons. Blue dragons do not have fire right. breath. So uh, go ahead and just do a do a general perception check. Okay. Into the uh, into the abyss that is this chaos. So is huh. there just like a lot of smoke and stuff going on that, it, that I would actually There's lots to... of smoke and people are screaming outside. I mean, okay. it's absolute chaos. The dragon itself has flown back up into, is starting to fly up back into the clouds. Yeah, that, that's always asking is like, is the dragon okay. like in the town actively attacking people or is it up in the sky? Uh, at this moment, it doesn't look like it's attacking anybody. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Probably oh, not, not safe to go swimming here. after having heard thunder um, yeah, don't get in a pool. Yeah, um, don't get in a pool. Is, so there are people screaming outside. Mm-hmm. Is there anyone who's hurt um, or like been pinned under something out in the street? I guess that would be my next go-to. Someone who needs rescuing. Someone who needs help. So you do see an elderly gentleman. He, he looks like he um, had fallen right when parts of the building that was in the claws of the dragon had fallen. It doesn't look like it fell on him, but it looked like he fell because of the, okay. know, the, the droppage. And he does look like he may have hit his head. Okay. Uh, I'm. My goal is to get to him as quickly as possible, get him out of the street and get him to a sturdy stone building or, or something that, or building that looks like it's more sturdy or a safe place. Okay. Uh, the, the next sturdy building would probably be across the street. Okay. So just beeline across the street. Right. Right. So you're beelining. You're putting on uh, armor, Usarker, and you just ran outside. What are you yep. doing? Um, so it's gone back up in the clouds. So I'm going to start helping people and shepherd people back towards the buildings to get safe. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm sure people have fallen. I'm sure people are huddling in fear outside when they need to go inside. And so I'll do that. Um, so I'm... I'll need a perception check from you, Ooh. an active perception check on this one. Okay. Cool. That's... Is it really safer inside than it is outside? He can't see you. <laughs> Relative safety. Yeah, that's fair. I believe safe um, is anyone who doesn't draw attention to well, themselves. Well, mm-hmm. um, plus two on perception, so that's a 10. Okay. I'm doing great. You're doing great. So yeah, there's people screaming. And it looks like that people are not necessarily running away from the dragon because the dragon, again, was roaring off into the distance. But it looks like people are running from the opposite direction towards you. Like what? they're running from something else. If I catch someone, can they tell me what's going on over there? You uh, you grab a, a teenager. Yeah. And she goes, <laughs> we're being attacked. We're being attacked. There's... There's like people and tiny, tiny dragons. You gotta run. And she just starts bolting. I'm trying to think of a reason why there would be baby dragons coming into town. And I'm very confused about what's going on. Unless maybe it's a goblin. And you she really's never seen a goblin. On tiny dragons? No, there's people and tiny and, dragons. And, and, okay. So maybe <laughs> a goblin riders. that they've never seen before? Goblin maybe. Dragon uh, <laughs> <laughs> Micro dragons. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast... We'll do... I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. And how long does that last for? It lasts for 10 minutes, and it is a concentration spell. Okay. So as I uh, I put down my... Uh, for the purpose of this casting, um, I'm going to cross my hands over my, my maul. And uh, as I pray and ha- cast Shield of Faith, my pendant is going to start glowing. Okay. So. All right. So as this is all happening, Izzy, you have you're running to the town. Ah. Do you see I'm this so thing breath. roar ah. and start to take off? Ah, jeez. <laughs> I did not sign up for this when I was coming here. Wait, can an air genasi run out of breath? Technically, no. <laughs> it's for more dramatic reasons. <laughs> Technically, she could she be holding her breath. breath. <laughs> she is breath. She, she, she's doing it to put on a show. That or works. something. I don't know. Let her so, the dramatic. She <laughs> forgot that she does, can't run out. She, she's actually kind of worried about something else at this time. And so the, the fact That's that true. there's this dragon appearing, she, she's just kind of like, I don't know what's going on with my life. Uh, Why is this happening? Ah! <laughs> Way too many thoughts running around. Yeah, so she's she's not thinking about that. She's just hyperventilating. 
So it's not really that she's out of breath That's from the exertion. It. She's just, wait, she's she's just hyperventilating much. from, oh crap, what's happening? What can I do? That works. Ah. But yeah. All right. So as you're running and freaking out yes. uh, appropriately, as <laughs> as you do when uh, there's a dragon attacking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How else are you going to respond? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. You uh, hear hoofbeats coming up behind you, and it's and uh, it's coming at you very, very quickly from behind you. All right. I'm going to move to the side and look behind me. What's coming behind me? So you look behind you, and you see a man who is very much pushing this horse as fast as this horse can go. And I did just text you a picture of what this guy looks like. Ooh. Okay. And for our listeners, uh, this man uh, is looks like a half elf. He's very, very tan. He looks like he's been out in the sun a lot this summer. Uh, probably forgot to put sunscreen on a couple times. Uh, he's got uh, short black hair, and he is carrying, uh, like on on his back as he's riding. He has a very long pole. He's wearing blue. Uh, a blue sash and mm-hmm. a blue and white coloring on his armor or on his clothes. Sorry, he's not Is wearing, he wearing some sort of leather armor as well. He's actually not wearing any armor. Okay. So that was my bad. So just, well, I mean, I couldn't tell if it was decoration or if it was actual armor. So it could be decoration. Been decoration. Okay. So this guy breezes right past you and he kind of, he kind of does a double take <laughs> and he slows down the horse and he turns back around and says, Wait, are you running towards this thing? Yes. Are you here to help fight? Um, yeah. Come with me. <laughs> and so he holds down, he he holds out his hand. I take his hand. All right, he I pulls you it. up and he starts booking it. So just and so I'm you, holding on tightly. Good. You're going to need to. <laughs> so oh, just no. so you guys know, if you look at the picture of, uh, just the general picture of Green Nest, the book itself does not really show you where any ends are at all. So I'm going to say that the inn is right here. Okay, so that's like northwest. Yeah, on the northwest side. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, never eat soggy waffles northeast, southwest, um, all of you guys came from the east getting there. Okay. And the way out west will take you to um, the road that takes you out of the country. Okay. So you all came... You all came from the east. So Izzy, you were also coming from the east. Well, except Kurt. Kurt, you kind of like, kind of did a this thing. Because just, yeah, that, kind that, of meandered in town. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's that fair. horse kind of made its own way. <laughs> Roads are for wimps. A, a southwest. No wonder it was being so slow. Yeah. So it just kind of made its own way. So the inn itself is in the northwest direction. Izzy, you saw the dragon on top of that building. But like I said, you're coming from this direction. Uh-huh. You're coming east going west. I'm heading west. You are heading west, yes. Yeah. So he he starts booking it and yep. he's like, and you guys see this thing take off and go up into the clouds and he goes, ah, crap, crap, I leave for one day and everything just just goes into the gutter. So, what's your name by the way? As I'm like riding behind him <laughs> on <laughs> his <laughs> galloping <laughs> horse. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry, pardon, uh, pardon my, uh, pleasantries I, no, i'm sorry it's fine. i just i want to ha- be able to call you something other than random dude on a horse <laughs> yeah sorry uh i uh i'm in a hurry but my name is leosin okay and i need you I, could you do me a favor sure leosin uh are you by the way are you a windwalker um yeah my name is izzy by the way Hi, I Izzy. Didn't return the That's easier than Windwalker. Yes. Hey, so um, I need you to do me a favor. Uh-huh. I need you to go find a the a cleric of Tempest. Uh, okay. Please. Um, How will I know when I find one? Well, they have that flaming sword symbol on them, and he he pulls up a he pulls up a chain, uh-huh. and you see the symbol of Tempest around his neck. Okay. You also see there's there's a few other uh, holy symbols around his neck, but this is the one he pulls out, and he goes. Uh, if you see this, um, you'll know it's it's them when it glows. I, I I know I know there's one that just came into town, even though I've been away. I don't have time to explain anything beyond that. <laughs> Please go find them. Th- they're gonna help you. 
Okay. Uh, okay. I, we need your we need your help, please. I, I uh, okay, Lewison, I will. Thank you. And I'm still riding on the back of the You're still horse. riding on the back of the horse. <laughs> uh as as you guys reach the uh the wall on the east side of the town, mm -hmm. the dragon comes down again. Uh, you see electricity crackling out of its mouth, and it roars. It doesn't doesn't spray a we oh, breath weapon attack, but it it's roars again, and you hear lots of people screaming. Also, as you get closer, you notice that uh, there's lots of fire, <laughs> and there is absolute chaos. As you guys are going into the town, there's people running out. So at Makes some sense. point, uh, Leosin looks at him. He's like, "I'm sorry. This this is too chaotic. I'm afraid I'm going to trample people. I can, can I drop you off here?" Yep. Uh, find her. She's she's probably she's probably in an inn. There's two inns. There's one on the northwest side, and then there's one directly on the west side. Right when you get into town from the west side. Okay. She'll probably be in one of those most likely if she's a traveler, which I assume she is. Okay. Um. So I'm going to leap off his horse and I'm going to start uh, weaving my way through the uh running people uh, and making my way towards the west side of town and keeping my eyes peeled for a glowing holy symbol of Tempest. All right, as you do. See you later, Leosin. <laughs> he just charges off in another direction. <laughs> Where is he going? You don't know. <laughs> well, is he on like west or did he go back east? He, he starts heading south. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So Izzy, you probably get... Uh, if you're looking at the east side, you get to the second block mm -hmm. uh, where the, the street starts going north and south, the second block right there. Uh, he starts heading south, but he directed you northwest. Right. So, what so are you doing? I'm running. And All right. I'm keeping my eyes peeled. As you're running, you notice that there are people with hoods on, mm -hmm. but there's also these tiny little dragon things running around are they doing anything they are untoward <laughs> they are some of them are trying to set buildings on fire oh. a lot of them are trying to set like haystacks on fire Sphine. yeah mm -hmm. and they're cackling okay uh they're like ha, 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 this is great ha, ha, we haven't been able to do this in a long time this is great and are the dragons um, or these are the wait are they goblins go ahead and make kobolds <laughs> They're draconic small things. Okay. Go ahead and make a history check, because you probably have not met one of these. I'm betting kobold. Hmm. That's a 14. This is a kobold. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just general things based on a 14. You know, the reason why you haven't seen them is because they like to they, they have really bad eyesight in the daytime, and they, they like to stay out at night, and you generally don't find one by its lonesome. They usually are running around in packs. Right. But they seem to, as you're looking around, they seem to be taking orders, I say in quotes, from some people in hoods. Huh. And some of them are running around saying, ha ha, give me your stuff, give me your stuff. And they are like tackling people. Oh no. And like digging through their pockets. Okay. Um, I'm... I'm not going to be able to help everyone, but if there's any, like, anyone who is being attacked by these kobolds that I can just, like, swipe them as I'm running past, mm -hmm. just kind of like a, 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 a what, a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> a drive-by smacking? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to do a run-by slashing. <laughs> yeah, a run-by uh, slashing with my scimitar. All right, so you see two, two kobolds that are chasing a an elderly woman and she's like get back get back and she's hitting them with her cane yep and they're just like give me your stuff we want your stuff i'm going to draw out my two scimitars and okay. i am going to leap on top of his back and try and drive the scimitars into his back <laughs> all right go ahead and roll for initiative <laughs> okay that's a nine great right. we're off to a good start for uh, our first combat yep great okay so the kobolds, uh, but go I got first. a surprise on him, right? Is it? I mean, he wasn't expecting me to jump on his back, was he? But he was in combat. Uh, okay. So he was in melee with the old woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but was okay. Yeah, the male the woman was attacking with her first or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she was taking her run. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I will tell you, based on their perception score that I'm looking at, they probably did not notice you. Like, they didn't even pay attention to you. Yeah. When you ran by yeah. the first time and you kind of just circle around. So, yes, you will get a surprise round on this one. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Corin. <laughs> no props. <laughs> All right. So, because I'm assuming he rolled a higher initiative than me. But I'm going to attack with my scimitars. Go for it. So, first attack. That's a 10. Uh, the the scimitar swings down, and you just barely grasp, like, parts of his hair. Um, right. If she has a surprise round, then that means that she should have advantage. Oh, that's right. It Go ahead and do know. it with advantage. Oh, I always forget that part. That was even worse. Okay. Oh. So you you're go to a dice jail. You go to swipe and you like your scimitar like nicks one of its ears and it goes, eh. Um, well, it knows I'm here now. <laughs> Alright, so yep. it, it turns around and is like, Why? Why are you doing this to us? I thought we were on the same side. Do what? I look like I'm with you? Yes! <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what <laughs> is he's wearing that makes him think he he's must like be blind, because it's in the daytime. <laughs> This is this is actually a twilight, so. Oh, okay. It's, the sun's going down. You're um, blue. He's blue. His dad is blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is he blue? blue da, 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 he's da, red. Da. Oh, he's this red. This one's red. red. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> like, what the heck, man? <laughs> he might um, not be used to colored humans, though. And yeah. the other one, That's the true. other one, like, doesn't even turn around. He's like, yeah, what, what the heck? And he's just, like, again, trying to dig through this old woman's pockets. Leave that old woman alone! And I... Try and smack them again. All and... right. So they do not. They will not try to attack you because they're confused. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and do another oh, attack. No. Okay. They're not used to. Also, new with my two weapon fighting, mm -hmm. um, that means I can make my use my bonus action to yes. attack. Right. Yes. Okay. So action attack. That cock. That is a nineteen to hit. Nice. That hits. Okay. Damage. That is a. Seven. Okay, so as you go to swing down this thing, this scimitar, he looks and he goes, why? Why are you? And you <laughs> manage to get it right in the throat. Oh, yes. And you cut off its head. Oh, I wasn't trying to go that. <laughs> okay. You you misjudged <laughs> the amount of power in your scimitar attack and just immediately cut off his head. Mm. Oh, he's dead now. Small well, big sword, that's, you know. that's what he gets for attacking poor defenseless old women, although... You are doing a great job defending yourself. No offense, ma'am. <laughs> and I'm going to use my bonus action to attack the other one. All right, go ahead and do that. That's the that one. Oh, no. Don't hit the old lady. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't hit the old lady. So you go to swing at this other one. The other one's, like, really scared. Uh-huh. And as you go to swing down, it jumps away at the last minute, and you manage to cut the old lady's pocket and you see like five gold pieces fall out. Oh, I am so sorry, so sorry. He definitely moved and I did not intend for him to move. What are you doing, young lady? I'm trying to kill this thing. Why are you trying you to kill me? You're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> and I'm gonna go and chase after this kobold. Even if I'm not gonna attack him again, I'm at least gonna run him off so he's not bothering the old lady again and then I can uh, try and continue on my way. Okay, cool. So this kobold sees you decapitate his friend. <laughs> Mm. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I did not sign up for this. And he starts dashing away. Yeah, you better run. So if you want no to take an attack of defenseless old ladies, if you want to take an attack of opportunity, you are more than welcome to. Say that one more time. If you want to take an attack of opportunity, you're more than welcome to. Sure, why not? Because, you know, I've been rolling so, so well so far. <laughs> That's a 10. Uh, oh. he, he, he has seen you swipe twice now. <laughs> And so he definitely dodges out of the way and he ends up, he actually grabs like a piece of gold and just starts skittering away. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to be like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Uh, if what is wrong with you? And she, <laughs> she will attempt to get you with her cane. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to change sides and join the kobolds? <laughs> no, I'm still trying to actually run to find this cleric of Tempest that, Leosin told me to go find. <laughs> so she she manages to hit you on the head, uh -huh. but it's like a t it's like a love tap. Uh -huh. It's like a boop. She's like, "Why are you trying to hit me, young lady?" And she keeps doing it, but it's like she I, has I'm no power. I'm going to grab a uh, bracelet from my waist and be like, "Condol or uh, like uh, retribution for 
Restitution. Uh, yeah. Restitution. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Um, like restitution for the trouble I put you in, and I'm gonna like just kind of. I'm not gonna throw it at her. I'm gonna like throw it near where the gold pieces fell to the ground, and I'm like really, really sorry, but there's more important things to do. I gotta run. So, bye. <laughs> As you're running away, she she takes another swing at you. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't hit. She's she's an old lady. <laughs> and she's like, why did you throw that down? I have a bad hip. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so. Sorry. <laughs> Ungrateful. All right. So you're continuing. So Dangerous you're continuing to run. You managed to make it um, into the center of town. Okay. Without uh, any incidents, and you notice that the kobolds are not attacking you specifically. Okay. How just, convenient. One yeah, of us. They, one they, of us. They, they seem to be Don't looking. Uh, they look to be not even really attacking people. Like they'll they'll hit somebody upside the head or something to knock them over, but they're not. They don't look to be doing any like severe damage to people. They mm. just look to be going for people's pockets or like taking their walking sticks or things like that. <sighs> they're just trying to be okay. pranksters. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Could it be that you are sticks? the violent one here? <laughs> I'm trying to protect the old lady. With, right. with, with certainly a raid violence. in one way or, or another. <laughs> They're kobolds. All right, so as this is happening, what are you guys doing back at the tavern? Usarker, I will I'm say at, at this time. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Usarker. I haven't gotten resolution on this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Usarker, you're still putting on armor. Armor. We'll say it's been about five minutes. You're halfway done. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, These things take time. Kurt, you have been, you have grabbed the old man and are helping him across the street. What else are you doing? I, I scooped him up and, and oh, taking sorry. him across you the street. You scooped him up like a bride on her uh, after being wed and <laughs> carrying him across the way. Either that or farm and carry one way or the other. Um, but yeah, to get it, get him across the street. Um, do I see the kobolds at this point? You do see some some young dragon-like things running around and cackling to themselves. Looking to set fire to things that potentially could catch fire. Okay, that's problematic. Fire is not okay. Um, Unless it, it's a campfire? Well, yeah. Uh, se- setting yeah, fire to buildings is not that. an acceptable thing to do. Gotta be responsible mm-hmm. for you, that Do fire. you have a Smokey the Bear avatar? Only you can prevent <laughs> city fires. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you, having lived in a forest right, you know, yeah, full that's of lots common. of wood and just looking at, you know, seeing when things go bad, you know, this is you know a, exactly. a wood thatch. Not okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so. And just so you know, as you're looking, they're coming from the south. Okay. Oh. Um, and there, there's a keep here too, right? There is a keep. It's right. It's this. It's this thing right there. Okay. Right in the center, center of town. Of, okay. Center of town. Yeah. Is that on a hill or anything that it's it is widely it is, yes. visible? Okay, mm-hmm. it's very visible. Um, you can see it wherever you are in the city. I, probably, I you know, say to the old man, like, you know, tell people to get to the keep, um, and I dash at, I run towards the um, towards the kobolds. Kurt's vision starts clouding over, and he mm. starts going into rage okay. um, in seeing this act of. Um, yeah, in, injustice and just wanton destruction um, and uh, so I, I rage and uh, charge the kobolds alright so there are three kobolds right in front of you and they look to be they look to be verbally assaulting a teenage boy they're like ha your hair sucks just give oh. me your gold um, I, I'm Heading towards ones that like are setting fire to things. Yeah, another one's got a, got fired okay. while the other two are insulting this guy. Yeah, I, I'm. He's getting a little teary eyed as he's trying to run away. Okay. <laughs> um, They're going to set the boy on fire. <laughs> I'm grabbing the one with the torch. I am going to try and grab him. Burning children do like and fire. Um, throw him at the others. All right, so go ahead and roll for initiative. <laughs> That's my intent. Roll okay. better than Izzy. Hey, that's an 18. Nice. All right. They actually got a 21. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm rolling yeah, really well, hard. guys. Uh, okay. okay. So they pro- ignore- pro- Probably heard me, you know, shouting, ah, you know. <laughs> Not yeah. subtle. So, so they actually look up. All three of them kind of look up and they're like, 
Oh, good, reinforcements! And they're gonna... The one with the torch in his hand is gonna, like, run across the... Is he gonna give it to... Try to give it to Kurt? Uh, you know what? Yeah, he's gonna try and give it to you. He's like, here, take this! <laughs> um. There's some more... There's some more bushes over there! There's some bushes. Okay. Um, when he oh, does no. that, I want to grab his arm. Okay. The other two are still verbally assaulting this this poor teenager. Um, I want insulting to... like his clothes and his shoes and whatnot. And... I want to grab this kobold's arm and hit the other kobolds with this kobold. <laughs> are you swinging or are you yeah. throwing him? Okay, hold that on. Sounds like a shove move to me. Let me look up. I, I will know. I, as while well, raging, I do get advantage on strength checks. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, and I have ta- Tavern Brawler Grapple. <laughs> um, is, so, that a, is that a bonus action? Um, when I hit a creature with an unarmed strike or an improvised weapon on your turn, you can use a bonus action to attempt to grab the target. So basically, I'm, I'm grabbing him with my action. That's what All I right, said. All right, so go ahead and do a athletics check. I, this is with advantage. This is a strength check, right? Yeah. You're most likely gonna beat this guy. Yeah, about nineteen plus seven. Yeah, Ooh. no, no, this this thing rolled a, a seven. <laughs> minus, <laughs> uh, minus. Uh, oh no. Minus two. Does know. this kobold count as an improvised weapon? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Okay, here's here's my question to make this work. Can you bench press thirty pounds? Of course, yeah. yeah. Then yes, it counts as an improvised <laughs> weapon. I was going to say, if I can bench press 100, you can bench press 30. Yeah, like, um, how about 20 strength here? Ooh, yeah. nice. Yeah. All right, so you grab this cobalt and you're going to swing it at the other one? Yeah. I'll say this, I'll say just for flavor's sake, you grab him and like the grapple check was literally just to grab his arm. So go ahead and make an attack roll on the other one. Okay. Uh... This one is insulting this kid's mother. Okay. Ooh, it's gotten serious now. Yeah. Um, 16 plus 7. So that hits. Okay. <laughs> and I get to add extra, uh, 1d4 plus this because of my tavern ball strike as my kobold as the improvised weapon. <laughs> yes. That is nice. awesome. I love that. Uh, hey, that's a 4. Cool. Uh, so looking at nine damage. All right, so you take this kobold. <laughs> they both die. And you smack the other one. They both get concussions and both die from said concussions. <laughs> oh no! Funny. So and I like scream at the kid. Keep. <laughs> <laughs> I like that when you're raging, like all intelligence just flies out the window. Yeah, it's just like I, I feel like I'm limited to like. Monosyllabic so, so things. Go ahead and make an wow. intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Because at this point, this is not key. persuasion. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 17. Yep. He goes, keep, keep what? <laughs> what am I keeping? I point at the castle. <laughs> oh, okay. And the third kobold on his turn is just going to run. <laughs> he sees yeah. you just destroy his comrades. And he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that about your mother. And, uh, <laughs> well, I guess my friend didn't mean that about your mother. I didn't say that. And then he just starts running away. You can take an attack of opportunity. For I so want design. to grab him and throw him. All right. Did we determine that you can't grapple? Oh, that's you right. cannot I grapple on that. a... I want to punch him then. Okay, go ahead and punch him. <laughs> That's that was yes, then. Oh yeah, that misses. So you you go to punch him. And he's like, no, no, no! I thought you were on our side. What's going on? And he just scrambles away. Mm-hmm. And the uh, kobolds. <laughs> the kid, uh, or the teenager, he goes, okay, keep right safe, goodbye. And he just <laughs> starts running away. <laughs> I'm impressed you managed to get goodbye out. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, Celestine. Yes. What are you doing? You um, saw this 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 guy in plaid just start running and destroy two coal balls just by smashing them together. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. He's doing pretty good over there. Uh, are there more cobalts coming up the street? There are more cobalts coming up the street. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna stop them as well and try to prevent more fires from spawning because that's gonna be the major problem for people hiding in houses. Okay. So so yeah. 
so you see three come up to you or coming up the way so the way that kurt went he just went south from where you guys are you okay. see some coming up from the west like they look like they had turned around two of them have torches and another one has like this giant bag that he's holding he's like man we got good stuff this time oh no and they're just trying to set these houses on fire unfortunately these houses are not setting on fire very easily so they're not really succeeding. He's just having fun drawing stuff on the Ash wall on, at this point. Yeah, yeah. drawings. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to. Let's see. Tell them to drop or to put down the torches and get out of town. And I'm going to hit one of the ones with torches. All right. Go ahead and make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Okay. Are they both ones? Proof. Uh-huh. Two 19s. <gasps> Two 19s? Wow. That's impressive. So that would be a... Persuasion? And it's very much yeah, like Yeah, persuasion. Do that. Uh, that would be... <laughs> yeah, just flat 19. Very Kayla moment. So yeah. they, they kind of look... They kind of look at you befuddled, and they're like, But I thought we were supposed to find stuff. But okay, whatever. And so they just start sauntering away. <laughs> So move faster. <laughs> they they kind of do a its trot, a little trot, and you see one of them like goes off to uh, another house and grabs a bell off of it's like like one of those uh, jingling bells when you walk in, uh -huh. mm. and grabs a bell and is like, "Fine, we're going. Bye." <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted to pull up my mom voice and tell him to drop it, but he's going, so I'll just let him go for now. Yeah, the one in the middle is just waddling because there's you're not sure what's in there, but it looks pretty heavy <laughs> for a kobold. All right, Wait, Izzy. steal the kitchen yep. sink? You, <laughs> yeah, you, you probably stole the kitchen sink. <laughs> so uh, you are starting to make your way uh, on the town map. You're starting to get into that four-way section that's going to lead north mm -hmm. to that first inn. And you do see a sign that says, in this way. Okay. I-N-N, -N, not I-N. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to look around. Do I see any other fights breaking out around me? Like, do... Because I, I am keeping my eye out for a cleric with a holy symbol or whatever. And I, I'm trying to get clues as to which direction I should go. Well, you don't, you don't necessarily see a cleric, but you do see a bear-like man wearing plaid. Mm. And you witness him and yelling. destroy two kobolds, and you're like, "Wait a sec! I I, I think I, 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 I know who that is. I know that technique. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize that plaid? Eh, probably not. It's probably a new plaid. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Or, or, or plaid I just never paid attention plaid. to what plaid he wore because it's plaid. Yeah." Could it be that you're a professional gnome tosser, gnome wrestler, and that you've used this before? This is, you know, when you, you get like four gnomes on you and, you know, you just like smack them together. I've seen no, him fight before. Yeah, it doesn't, they don't have to be gnomes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, we, gnomes. We, we had all kinds of wrestling matches at, at the lodge. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to see this bear like figure and I'm going to yell out, Kurt! <laughs> Kurt, you hear. Kurt! Often uh, heading south for me after you after this uh, boy starts running away. Um, and I'm gonna start running up to him. <laughs> okay. I am still like enraged, yeah, kind of thing. There you like, are. so, you're probably so not recognize. like, see, um, someone running at me with swords. Oh, that's a good point. I sheath the swords while I'm running. I will pause to sheathe the swords. Did your mother teach you not to run with scissors? I, I don't know. My mom died oh. when I was young. Ouch. Oh, ouch. ouch. Ow. Jeez. <laughs> but I guess Some my master's thing. wife told me not to run with swords. Awkward. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that sounds um, like something a master's wife would probably Are there be other yeah. things happening around in the street right now? There, There is absolute chaos. I mean, there, there's people running. There's people screaming. Uh, there's kobolds tripping all over everybody. It's it's mass chaos, and it's it's starting to head towards you. You think that these three kobolds that you met first 
were kind of the forerunners. Mm -hmm. But as you see, there's more and more people, and there's people in hoods starting to come and give direction. You hear them shouting out directions to these kobolds. Um, I think that I'm going to focus on anyone who has a torch and look like it was like they're attacking houses or things like that. That seems to be like, that was my mental... That's yeah. what set you off? Yeah. That that was my go-to when I went into rage, so that's what I'm focused on, uh, unless there's real threats. Um, was, was Izzy way far out, or was she closer? So I'm going to say that you were in the middle of that street. Okay. So right... I wish I had a map for our listeners, but right there, Izzy... So just, just a little bit further away from the inn. Yeah, just okay. a little bit. You can still see the inn. Uh, you probably can't see Celestine. You may not have even seen her at all. No, uh, she probably she, went she out kinda, behind me or She kind of went the other yeah. direction. Okay. But uh, Izzy is coming up from this direction. Okay, so you're, you're still a ways away. Yeah. A couple okay. blocks and maybe or something. She's... I, I think I turned her at the sound of his, his voice, uh, his name. Um, but there were other threats closer, and so I r rush off towards those. And then you saw more torches, and you were yeah. distracted. Yeah. Okay. And I probably will notice that Kurt is acting this way, and I'll know he's in the zone, so he's fighting something. I need to be careful about approaching him, because I know what he can do. I don't want to be at the at the end of his fists. <laughs> mm. Right. His fists of fury. Yeah. I <laughs> Celestine, after seeing what she, he can do, too, is all, yep. Distance is good. Right. So, it's like, I don't want to fight him. He's my uh, sparring partner, but I don't want to fight him for realsies. <laughs> All right. Berserker, your armor is finally on. What do you do? Yay. <sighs> oh, good. Well, I am brimming with anticipation. This is exactly the kind of event that I've been looking for. And so I am going to stride downstairs in my armor. Seeing that, of course, all the heroic figures have already charged into the fray, I am going to calmly walk outside, <laughs> and I'm going to look about and survey the situation. Do I assumedly see little lizard men running about, um, threatening and in a haphazard sort of way and stealing from people, while hooded and robed figures make more concerted effort to try and herd and guide them? You, you see them down the way, so they're they're coming, again, they're coming from the south to the north. So you see them coming up the way. They're, most of them are right, kind of down in the south. So they're west still portion. a long way off. They're, they're kind of a long way off. You can still see them. There's there's some stragglers coming, like I said. Uh, but you do see a blue-tinted woman uh, right in front of you. You see Kurt, the, or the... Uh, the bear man with plaid. I'm not sure if you guys actually exchanged names yet. Um, no, not yet. no, we have not had a contact. The, the plaid bear man, uh, he he kind of just runs off, just heading towards the next kobolds that he can see. And you see the nun, or sorry, not the nun, the cleric. You see the yes. cleric <laughs> kind of on that corner there. And she, she looks to be uh, not necessarily waving off some kobolds, but she looks like she's giving a very stern glare to some kobolds that are <laughs> away from her. <laughs> I am going to search the skies for this dragon because it is an omnipresent threat. Yeah, so the dragon uh, at this moment does come back down again. It doesn't land this time, but it, it roars. Uh, but it's actually, it came down on the southwest portion at the very bottom of the map. So it's it's gone from northwest um. to southwest and, it, and it's going to start heading back up again. Usarker has a theory. Can I spend my turn watching the dragon? You can. My what are you theory looking for? is that this dragon isn't actually attacking people directly, but is causing havoc and tearing things up and creating, you know, essentially creating terror and surprise and shock. But for whatever reason, I haven't seen it actually use its breath weapon. I haven't seen it actually eat someone. So something is strange it's not getting stuck in and so i want to confirm that that seems to be the case all right go ahead and do go ahead and do an insight check trying to figure out the dragon's motivation that, that sounds about right mm -hmm. i have a 13. 
So you're not entirely Keep sure watching. what the dragon's motivation actually is, but you you are starting to think that your hunches might be correct. It again, it, like you said, it doesn't seem to be attacking anyone. The only damage it did was initially when it landed on the buildings. Um, but it's kind of early, too early to tell. It's only been running around for like 10, 15 minutes. It could just be waiting for a snack. You're not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't believe that. There are lots of snacks running around. Um, <laughs> I'm going to run over to, not run, I'm going to move swiftly over to the Tempest Cleric because the plaid bear looks violent and I have no idea who Blue Lady is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something is strange. The dragon isn't attacking. It is just harassing and annoying people. So as he says that, Izzy, you hear this. You're close enough that you can hear that that happening. And I see the cleric next to him. You do. And as you as you come into view of of Celestine, you see that uh, that symbol that uh, Leosin showed you before around her neck starts to glow. All right. And I see that, and I'm gonna be like, "You're the one I'm supposed to find." <laughs> I look up and I'm like, "Okay, most." <laughs> He, I guess. Um, some think some of... guy named Leosin told me to find a cleric of Tempest, and I would know the person I was looking for when I saw their holy symbol glowing, and your holy symbol just glowed. Do I recognize the name? You do not. Huh. You do not know a Leosin. And you didn't say that he was another cleric of Tempest, right? I don't know what he was. Okay. He had a bunch of different symbols. <laughs> it's so. true. And Izzy's not very knowledgeable when it comes to the different, like, gods and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she's just like, a cleric's a cleric, right? So she's facing <laughs> sideways from you, so you can see on her, I am think. I'm facing west, you're coming up south, so on the left side you can see the a very similar uh, symbol on her left pauldron uh, for the tempest. The, the symbol of Tempest, sword. the flaming sword, is on her left pauldron. All right. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Okay. So I don't know why all these kobolds are attacking, but they're freaking annoying. Also, my friend Kurt back there is in a rage. I'm really scared to approach him right now. Um, It looks like you guys need some help. What can I do to help? Um, does Zeus Arker have a plan? I'm going to look about. The kobolds aren't attacking. They appear to be lighting fire to things, but... And attacking old ladies. I would suggest that the real threat is whoever is in charge. That I looks point like down the, uh, south cultist. back where the blue lady came from. I did see a bunch of people in hoods who seem to be giving directions to the kobolds. Now that you mention it. Let's well? go confront them if we wish to figure out something. I think that these kobolds are just minions. Yep, if we kill the uh, the guys that are giving the orders, then they'll probably break and run. The kobolds will. Sounds like a plan. Hey, Kurt! Kurt! Stop raging for a second! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Grab another kobold and throw him. <laughs> yeah, you, you managed to smash another couple kobolds before your rage No, Kurt, we, 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 have, we have a plan of action. You, you gotta come with us. We need you. Come on, it's me, Izzy. Is, is? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Okay, I, 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 like he's panting and like drops the cobalt. <laughs> Izzy's is. still not like getting within five feet of him. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's okay, it's okay. You're, you're with friends. Hi, hi. It's been a while, uh, but we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take a moment. It's okay, breathe. <laughs> so I've caught your name is Izzy. You're apparently Kurt. My name is Celestine. Oh, it's, it's wonderful that, to meet you, great. Celestine. Going we gotta on. go. <laughs> and, yep, and I say, we're going after the guys with the hoods. Let's I, go. Let's I do nod it. to you, Celestine, and say, I am Lord Pride. It is a pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, Lord Pride. You are a cleric or priest of some sort, if I am not mistaken. Yep. Perfect. Our plaid bear appears to be a violent hand-to-hand -hand combatant, and I have no idea about his friend. I, I will note to our listeners, I am not actually a bear. <laughs> not, like, not like an anthro bear. Just a bear of a man. 
<laughs> Big and hairy. So, continue. So, as you guys are discussing uh, your plan, without warning, five humans dash out from between two buildings on your left. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows, and a woman carrying a round shield and a broken spear turns and faces back in the direction from which they came. Eight kobolds stream oh. out of the alley on the family's heels and fan out around the woman, who looks determined to delay the creatures for as long as possible. Izzy, you recognize this woman. You oh. recognize these three children. Oh, oh hey! No. It's my friends! <laughs> yep, this is Lean On. And you assume that the hurt man, the severely hurt man, is No, not their daddy. They were so excited to see. And her three children. Oh, well, they no. got to see their dad. <laughs> very, very briefly. <laughs> I am going to say, they need help. They're my friends. I met them. Um, I told Five them not to come to into town. <laughs> 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 Distinctly told them not to come into town. But, uh... Guys, we gotta get rid of these kobolds. They they need our help. And so I am going to uh, pull out my scimitars again, and I'm going to charge these kobolds. All right, go ahead and roll for initiative, everyone. Okay. I mean, you can choose to join me in this fight or not. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> I think that oh. Usarker shrugs in his armor and says, if they're in the way, we might as well. All right, Izzy, what'd you get? 14. Celestine. I rolled a 12, so that makes my initiative 10. Oh, Usarker. Negative. <laughs> I also <laughs> got a 10. Bad. Minus two. Uh, I think you I go first. I assume your dex is higher. It is higher than Celestine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been concerned if it wasn't Kurt. I, would uh, I ended up with a five. I rolled a two. Okay. Yeah. Woo. Still wearing off that rage. Okay. Yeah. All right, so first off, Linan, uh, she is going to aim for the first kobold who is attempting to grab at Terran, and Terran is screaming. Uh, and you also notice that as it's he's trying to grab for Terran, he's actually grabbing for the bracelet around her. <gasps> I'm surprised not they're not that. trying to kidnap you. With all of your bangles yeah. and jewelry off the sash. Apparently. I mean, it's they not think very she's fellow bangles. Oh, I wonder, if, yeah. is that why they thought that you were with them? Because you have Maybe. all the bangles. <laughs> <laughs> it begins to make sense Actually, now. that would make sense. But, like, the most expensive thing I have on me is, like, worth five silver. I mean, they or, stole... No, a silver. I mean, they stole a kitchen sink. <laughs> so, I don't yes. think they're picky. I think a kitchen sink would be more... Worth more than the jewelry I'm wearing. Maybe, maybe even combined. Eh. <laughs> Depends on the kitchen sink. Maybe. So the the kobolds are paying you no mind. They are specifically going after this family. All right. Yeah. I'm going to be attacking the nearest one to me. That's All right. Threatening Lenon and. Uh, oh my gosh. Why do I keep forgetting her daughter's Taryn. name? Taryn. Taryn. Yep. Yes. And the other two children. Let me go back to my notes. Where'd you go? You know them as Taryn, Reggie, and Willow. You ended up learning their names. Okay, Taryn, Reggie, Willow. All right, so the first first up is Lena, and she's going to attack uh, Cobalt A, and she manages to hit. Uh, she's uh, carrying a spear, I believe I said. Yeah, a broken she's spear. She's carrying a spear and a shield. So she okay. ends up dealing... Okay, she ends up dealing five points of damage Ooh, nice. and manages to just gut one of these things. Just stabs him right in the gut and it just dies. Go, Lenan! Cobalt mm -hmm. kebab. All right, and that is the end of her turn. Next up is Isidore. Yay! All right, so I am going to go charging in with my scimitars and uh, attack the nearest one to me. Okay. That's a 12. That hits. Yes. That's five damage. And then I use my uh, offhand, my bonus action to offhand attack. Uh, save it. He's also oh. dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. well. You managed to cut this guy's head off too. Okay. Oh <laughs> Jeez. There is another kobold that was next to him. minimum damage. There's, another, there's a kobold next to him as well. 
All right, so can I use my offhand attack against him? You may. Okay. That doesn't hit. All right. What was it? It was a eight. Okay. <laughs> no, that doesn't hit. <laughs> All right, so Isidore, you managed to completely destroy one. Uh, Lena looks grateful, and she's like, Izzy, thank you! And you're like, uh, of course. Uh, what are friends for? Also, go, let's keep fighting these kobolds. And you go to swing to the other one, and you just manage to like boop it on the head. And it's like, <laughs> all right, it knows I'm threatening it. Yeah. Next, uh, next up is Usarker. All right, I am going to stick close to Celestine, who seems the most level-headed of our group so far. <laughs> um, but I am going to maneuver myself near one of these kobolds using my reach as an advantage to stay out of direct melee range, and I'm going to slash at it. Okay. That is a 23. That hits. That hits. I, if my 12 hit, I think. <laughs> I do four points of damage. All right, you, man you go after kobold C, as I have so aptly named in my initiative tracker. <laughs> A and B and C. Yeah. And he goes, ow, what the heck, man? I thought we were on the same side. And he looks severely wounded. Anything else? Um, I am going to shout out to Celestine and say, work with me. Uh, flank this one and we can take him down more easily. Okay. And I'm going to use Tandem Tactician to give as a to get, use my bonus action to provide a help. Um, nice. if, is anybody else intending to attack this kobold? Oh, this kobold? This kobold. I. We only have one more there, right? There were eight to begin eight? with. Eight. There are eight. One, yeah. Two, We've three, killed two, four, five. injured one, so there are still like. There's five at full health and one that just got hit. Yeah. Yeah. This one looks on death's door. So, not. unless I completely I'm, miss. I, I intend on wading into the center of it. I mean, you could give him a help action. Or, I can't. Uh, I, it has to be the same target. Well, yeah, you could give it to him in case I miss. You could give it to uh, You, Kurt. Clad, if you hit this Clad. one, try stepping around beside it. You have a help action if you choose to hit this kobold. If okay. he's not dead. All right, Celestine, your turn. Okay. I pull my... Uh, my war mall off my back. Actually, I already had it in my hands technically, so I am going to swing at it. Okay. Also, you has have my advantage. yes. Fell back. Is my shield of faith uh, down? It was only ten minutes, and technically, it took ten minutes for his armor. Yep. For yeah, armor. I would say it's down. Okay, cool. Um, that would be I'm. That was a one and a thirteen, so. That would be 19 to hit. 19 hits. Okay, he's probably dead. And you're you're going after C? Yes. He's dead. Don't okay. don't even roll. He's gone. Cool. He gone. Yeah, he went ne there's no way he would have survived that. That was 13 damage. Right. No. No, he did not yeah. survive this. <laughs> no way. All right. So next up it looks to be the husband's turn and the children. They're also on the initiative. They are backing away and he's he's trying to grab the children and move him behind him. He is limping severely, though. I'd like so, to position myself in such a way that the kobolds would have to pass by me in order to get to him. Okay, cool. Plant yourself on the alleyway there. Yep. Cool. Kurt, it is your turn. No, kobolds. And um, I believe you have a help back. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so just reviewing here. Um, we're, we're in an alleyway, is that right? You are in an alleyway. Okay. And so we've got the kids down there uh, with the husband um, and then the wife. And then Celestine um, and her circer. Um, kobolds kind of intermixed in there. The kobolds were attempting to surround them when you guys first saw them. Okay. So they're kind of in a they're kind of in a U shape. Okay. Now half um, of the U because three of them are dead. <laughs> yeah. Is, is the one that Usurker in, indicated still? He's dead. He's he dead. did. Okay. So I'm gonna. He took like 13 damage. Nice. Yep. Uh, I, I want to step over that one. And maybe there's a, a kobold who's like trying to come around the edge towards the the family, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to uh, swing my fist at one of them. All right, go ahead and make your attack. Um, that is 
14 plus 7. Uh, that hits? Yeah, yeah, don't even calculate one. That, mm. that one hits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is... 8 damage. Uh, he did. Yeah. I, I don't even have to pull out my axes. I just... <laughs> yeah, you just smack him. You, you rear back your fist and you punch him in the teeth. And his head just kind of snaps and you hear a sickening crunch as, you know, the, the bones in his neck snapped. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, be careful or we're going to name you the bare-fisted brawler. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad nickname. Um, yeah, the as far as nicknames go, that is not a bad one. A- as you see that, in fact, there uh, as um, his, his fist goes by, you see a um, bear claw tattoo on his fist. Okay. Um, that is a thing that I actually thought about previously. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. I like it. Nice. All right. Next up are the four kobolds. They are terrified. <laughs> They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This was not what we agreed to. Why Why are you attacking us? We're supposed to be attacking them. And This is not how we were These are my go. friends. You're attacking my friends, so therefore I fight you. I, I do not comprehend what you are saying. And we so, are not friends. your allies. All right, so Kobold <laughs> that I have absolutely named E <laughs> is... Um, and that, that's spelled E-E. Yeah, E-E. <laughs> he is going to attempt to... He's actually going to attempt to go after Kurt. Because he saw you destroy his brother. <laughs> that's what happens. That's fair. I understand. I understand. Yep. And because you guys are mo- technically surrounded, he has advantage due to pack tactics. Okay. So uh, twenty-three to hit. Uh, that does. Oh boy. Ooh. Yeah. I've got a pretty high AC, but he beats me. That is five points of damage. Um. Oh, and I'm not raging. Um. Oh well. Okay. So E and F are flanking you. So F is also going to try and attack you. Uh, does a not, uh, uh, My AC is 17. Yeah, that does not hit you. The se- uh, F tries to go for you. He's like, yeah, you killed his brother! And then flinches back when he sees just how, like, brutally you destroyed his his friend's brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, G and H. They're going to go uh-huh. after... They're going to go after Celestine because okay. they want to try and get to the children. Okay. Okay, does a 14 hit? Nope. All right, so G takes the swipe at you, uh, slips on some loose gravel, and oh, no. kind of stumbles. H also misses. He he goes, dude, what the heck? And also stumbles on as he tries to lunge on that same piece on that same patch. <laughs> Celestine's gonna note that piece of gravel and not walk there. <laughs> right, avoid it. All right, top of the round, Lena is going to attack. Uh, Cobalt F, no, Cobalt G, because G is closer. She rolled a 12, so she actually hits. Nice. Man, she's hitting pretty good. I am very amazed with Lenon. As well as I'm I. <laughs> it's that mother fury. Yes. So she, she hits, uh, did I say G? Yeah, G. She hits G and manages to flay him hard enough that if he ever tried to run away, his arm was not going to work, but he is still alive. Oh. Just barely. Now Dang. he's going to do the smart thing and run. <laughs> Isidore, it is now your turn. So, because I'm right next to Lenown, I'm also going to be attacking the aptly named Cobalt F. Okay. No, not F. G. Uh, G. G. That one. G. Sorry. Yes. And it's I spelled G E E. Right. Either that or J E. Oh, yeah, J E. I like that better. It's spelled J-E-E. G. <laughs> not, not to be confusing at all. It's all right. a, <laughs> no. a family name. Yeah. It's a family. It's so. one of those new agey spellings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to attack it with my scimitar. All right, going after G. Yep. The really, really dis- dis- disturbly hurt one. Yep. Okay. That one. Ooh. Oh. You go to... You, you find the him. same patch you of gravel? You manage to step on the same patch, Ugh. and you stumble. <laughs> Dang it. But I'm not prone. You are not prone. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to offhand attack. Okay. 
I can just see as you're stumbling, your knife goes, Pew! <laughs> Uh, that's, that's an eight. At least All right, because you the stumble. The betraying me today. At least it wasn't another nat one. That's true. Yeah. Because you stumble, you you go to you actually use your offhand to try and brace yourself just in case you fall, and you you don't manage to get the attack off at all. Man, unfortunately. All right, Usarker, it is your turn. All right. They're using wolf-like tactics in order to try and distract us and come in for closer hits. Don't let them do that. Don't let them gang up on you. Um, still using my party members as a little bit of cover from the kobolds, I am going to continue to use the reach of my scythe and I'm going to slash at another one of the kobolds. Okay. Are you going after E, F, G, or H? I'll go after G. He seems popular. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His uh, arm is hanging by a thread. All right. I am going to now... Um, use my tandem tactician again, and I'm going to provide a help action for Celestine on G and for Usarker on G. Did you hit? I don't Wait, need to. Usarker or for Kurt? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I missed. Okay. <laughs> Usarker or Kurt? You can't help yourself, can no, you? No, I, I can't help myself. Sorry, did I say Usarker? You did. I yeah. meant Mr. Kurt Bernhardt, a.k.a. the plaid bear. Okay. Okay. The plaid bear that's not a bear. Yeah. All right, G is very, very, very lucky. <laughs> Celestine, it is now your turn. You have G and H on you. Okay, should I go for G, guys? Might as well. Join the rest of the party. G have is probably going do. to survive this fight at the rate this is going. I know, oh, right? Okay, we're going to go for G just for the heck of it. I get advantage. Uh, that would be a 16. Don't roll. Okay. He's dead. Aha. You managed to cut off his other arm and he just bleeds out. Okay, very cool. quickly and dies. <laughs> okay. All right, anything else? Um, I, let's see. Hang on. I'm trying to remember what my... Unless you have a bonus I'm, action or a move. I'm going to go ahead and do use my War Priest uh, capability. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says when you use the attack action, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action. You can use this feature two times per long rest. All right. Are you going after E, F, or H? H. Okay. the other one. Cool. Ooh, uh, that's a nine. Unfortunately, that misses. Okay. You go to swing. You're like, ha ha, I gotcha. And you um, just, nope. you got a little too cocky. Yep. It happens. Okay. All right. So the husband is again backing away with the children, trying to push him back. They're now up against a wall. Unfortunately, but he uh, on his next turn, if these kobolds are still alive, he he does look like he's prepared to attack. Uh, Kurt, it is now your turn. Um, there are still lots of kobolds here. Um, right. How many are left? There's there, H. There are Three. E, F, and H. E and F are okay. still on you, and H is on Celestine and the uh, the family. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack one of them um again trying to give the the family time to get away okay e f or h and you have advantage because of the help action okay yeah i'm gonna attack e i guess okay hey, that's a natural 20 there nice. yes go ahead right. and roll your damage let's see how brutal this murder is oh uh. okay so double dice right yes Plus five, so ten. Nice. You kill it twice. <laughs> right on the dot, you kill it twice. <laughs> okay. Right. Is there anything else you would like to do? Um I can't I can't grapple the 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 dead body. I mean I, I could, <laughs> but I like it. It might get weird. Would it be a better <laughs> weapon than your fist? I don't think so. It would be the same. <laughs> but more th it could be thematic if you wanted to go that route. Yeah, no, that's fine. I think that only happens um, when he's raging. He's not raging yeah. right now. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> All right, so it's now Cobalt F, G, and H is... No. F and H. You you just killed E. E is gone. Yeah. Uh, F and H kind of give share a glance between, the and they're like, between each other, and they're like, Man, why? Why are they attacking us? And the other one's like... H is like, I don't know, man. Why are, why are we even here? We just said, we just said, sure, why not? Because we had nothing else to do. And F is like, man, 
I don't have time for this. I want to live. And they both dash away. So all of you that was a very are welcome to take attacks of opportunity on them if you so yeah. desire. Attack of opportunity. Do I get the feeling that they're just going to cause havoc elsewhere in the town? Do a really quick insight check. 17. Okay. Did everybody have that opportunity to make yeah, that? Yeah, you can do okay. that. That's yeah. a 16. I'm going to try and kick one. I have a 14 on my attack of opportunity. Okay. Five points of damage. All right. Were you going after F or H? Uh, Probably H, because H is closer for me. He did. Yes. That's uh, what you the get answer for is going yes. after my friend. Okay. For that insight? That they're, you did, did they're you gonna keep inside yeah inside? I was, uh, no I was attacking okay okay yes they are basically gonna leave and go and join another group okay cool to ca cause havoc so both of you are attacking H mm -hmm. you got a four uh, I, Usarker I got a 14 H. sorry you're going after F Usarker what you got a 14 I did what did you get Kurt uh 17 plus seven okay you he two did. in tandem whack, not whack. only decapitate one of you decapitates the other one just punches oh. off a leg. So Lena Ann goes, Izzy, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yes. I'm I'm glad you're okay. What what happened? I I we ran we the carriages. I told you to stay in the carriages. Well the, the horses went wild and we had to get out and okay. we, we were close to the house, but uh Kuth Kuth wasn't there and we, we we just we finally found him, but he was hurt. They were attacking him and trying to take all of our stuff and and we we need to get to the keep. Can can you guys help us get to the keep? Yes, please. Yes, of course. We we, we can take them to the keep, right? Guys? Yeah, that that's what I was trying to get uh, tell other people to go. That seems like the smartest place to go when things are on fire is a stone building. The governor, the governor should be there. He he'll know what to do. Uh, All right, L Lynette, I don't think we can make feet. it to the keep because those hooded figures are on the road in between us and the keep. We would have we to deal with we would have to deal with them before we could go to the keep. Sending people through them seems like a death sentence, perhaps. We he's well, saying we can make it, we could go through, but he doesn't want to send them first. No, I agree. We shouldn't just send them without us. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And, and because she asked us to uh, guide them there or protect them on their way there because her husband's hurt. So no, I was definitely thinking that we would be the ones basically leading the charge. Okay. Very well. Let's go. All right. And I say if we come across any more townspeople uh, along the way, we grab them into the group. <laughs> they can also provide some extra yeah, kinda, cover. We maybe you know, like strength and circle around them kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Something. Right. Okay. So just looking at the map, so you guys know... You are not too far from the inn, I guess. Three. You I'm are about... In between the area where the cultists are and the area where the inn is, mm -hmm. I guess. So, if you guys try to go the way that you are going, you will have cultists and... Most likely cultists. You're assuming they're cultists at this point. And mm -hmm. kobolds in your way. Cool. Uh, you could try to uh, go around a different path. You could try to, uh, I mean, if you really want to, you could try and head down to the river. Um, there's there's many, many options for you guys, but as you guys start looking for possible ways to take this family to the keep, we will end our session. Thank you for listening to this first episode of Power Word Crit. All episodes can be found on our website, powerwordcrit.com, or on any site that supports podcasts. To end the episode, we thought it'd be fun to share some insights into our characters, out-of-game scenes, or anything that might be considered breaking the fourth wall. These may or may not be canon to the game, but we hope you enjoy them anyways. Never underestimate elderly women, even if they're being harassed by little dragonoid creatures. They are stronger than they look and don't always need you to rescue them. Also, their purses can feel like they're filled with bricks when they swing them at you. Uh...